Hey everyone, it's Sarah Threadster Nurse RN.com, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about breastfeeding, specifically what to expect during those early days. So, after you give birth to your baby, your breasts are actually ready to feed your baby because they have been preparing through your whole pregnancy for this moment. And the first type of milk that your breasts are going to have ready for your baby is called colostrum. And colostrum is a unique looking substance. It's like this yellowish orange liquid and it is jam packed full of nutrients that your newborn needs during those first few days of life. One thing it has in it are like immune cells that's going to provide immune protection for your baby from those outside germs. So you want to make sure that your baby is receiving this colostrum. Now during this time, your baby's stomach is extremely small. It's like the size of a blueberry. So you can just visualize how small that is. That means they don't need a lot of colostrum. But as the days go on, the stomach's going to stretch to a bigger size. So your breasts know that. And so whenever you fill your breasts, you may notice they feel soft. Do I even have any milk in there? You may be wondering, am I even producing any milk? And you are, the colostrum is in there. So this is like a really crucial time. This is when you want to be bringing your baby to your breasts as much as possible. You want that skin to skin contact. You want to be um, undressing your baby, placing them directly on your chest, cuddling your baby, letting them suck at your nipple as much as possible because that is telling your body, hey, we need to be producing milk because as the days go on, your milk supply will start to come in. And this is where you're training your baby how to feed at the breast, but you're also training your breasts to make milk. Now, the thing about newborn babies is that they're a little bit sleepy during those first few days and they have to be coaxed into coming to the breast to nurse. Some not so, not so much, but some they do. But you will notice after a while, whenever you hit about day two or three, all of a sudden they're going to start waking up, especially at night whenever you're trying to sleep. And they're going to want to, um, they may be cranky and they'll be wanting to come to the breast more often and nurse a lot longer. But this is a good thing. You want to give them lots of time to do this to be at the breast because it's building your supply now whenever I had my sons I have two sons my first son I actually pumped exclusively breast milk for him for almost about two years and then for my second son I exclusively have breastfed him for almost two years we're about to hit the two-year mark um, pretty soon we're actually in the process of weaning but whenever they were first born with my son who was exclusively breastfed I would bring him to the breast every at least every two hours mornings and nights throughout the whole day just getting them there now whenever i was pumping with my son because he had some latch issues and um, he just wasn't latching and i wanted to make sure that my milk was going to be coming in i would um, use a breast pump that the hospital had and i would pump all throughout the day every two hours including nights just to make sure i was pumping him some colostrum that he could take and to um, help build my supply. Now, if you do choose the pump, here are some tips I recommend. Number one, that you get a good quality pump. In the hospital, they have awesome hospital grade pumps and you want a pump that's going to be able to remove the milk from your breast and to make sure that you can keep up your supply if you are going to do it for the long haul. Because during my time breastfeeding my first son, I went through a lot of pumps and it was very frustrating because they were just low quality and it was affecting my milk supply. So I got with a lactation consultant and she recommended that I go with a hospital grade pump. Now they can be expensive, but there are companies that will actually rent them out to you. Sometimes insurance plans cover them, but I recommend that you look into that. A pump I used was called a Meta and it, it worked great and I really loved it. And one thing I wanna point out is that whenever you are starting to pump during those first few days, you're gonna notice that not a lot's really coming out because again, it's the colostrum and your body's not making ample amounts of it at that time because your baby's stomach's extremely small. So don't let that defeat you, make you think, uh, okay, my breasts don't work, I don't make enough milk because that is what you're supposed to be making. Now, after a few days after your baby is born, your breasts know that, okay, we're gonna have to start making milk because this baby's stomach is increasing in size and so 
is its caloric needs. So your breasts are going to transition from making colostrum to milk. So this is the period where your milk is going to start coming in. And again, this can vary between women. It can be three to five days. For me, every time with my children, it was day three. So you're going to notice this change. Your breasts are going to start to feel heavy. They're going to be large, larger than before, and they're going to start leaking milk. Now this can be uncomfortable, and if you've never experienced it before, you may be wondering what in the world is going on. I know for me, I was like, am I doing something wrong? But with my second one, I was a little bit more prepared. And over the next few days, your breasts are going to regulate themselves, and that heaviness and the leaking will decrease, I promise. It's not gonna be like that forever. So during this time, you wanna make sure that you are bringing your baby to your breasts as much as possible and that you keep pumping. And when you are pumping and you notice that as those days pass, you're producing a lot more milk than baby can actually take in, this is actually a great time to build up a freezer stash for whenever your baby's gonna need it later on. So I really recommend that you get some special bags that are made specifically for breast milk that you can actually use to freeze in your freezer. So here are some things you want to remember about breast milk if you are pumping. Freshly pumped breast milk generally lasts for four days in the refrigerator. So if you pump it fresh, need it to go in the refrigerator, just label it and know it's good for four days. And then if you want to put it in the freezer, it can stay in the freezer for up to six to 12 months. And if you're going to keep it out in room temperature, you can keep it out for about four hours and then it needs to be refrigerated. But let's say that you need to warm or thaw the breast milk, you're ready to use it. To warm it up, you never want to microwave it, but you want to take it and put it under warm water for a few minutes to allow it to get warm. And one thing I wanna point out is that if you have frozen your breast milk and then you go and warm it up, you'll probably notice that it's separated, like you have the water content and then the fat contents there on the top. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just to separate it during the freezing process and you'll just wanna give it a gentle shake to mix it again. Now, after after you're into a few days of breastfeeding, whether you're nursing strictly at the breast or you're pumping, you're gonna notice that your nipples are starting to feel a little uncomfortable because they're being used like every hour. And so they're having to really toughen up in a sense. So during this time, you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to your nipples and that you're taking steps to protect your nipples because your nipples can become cracked. They can also become damaged if you have a poor latch, which I'm gonna talk a little bit uh, about here in a moment. So here are some tips that you wanna keep in mind with nipple care during those early days to help really make it feel more comfortable for you. You wanna make sure that you allow your nipples to air dry after every feeding. Uh, you wanna avoid cleaning your nipples with any type of soaps because that can dry them out. And every time before you feed, you need to use a good nipple cream. And this is especially true if you're using a pump. And then whenever you're done feeding, you want to make sure you apply this nipple cream again. This helps keep them moisturized. And you wanna make sure that if you do choose to wear a bra, that you're wearing a bra that is not tight fitting and that it's comfortable and preferably wire free. So now let's talk about breast rotation. Whenever you're feeding your baby at the breast, how do you rotate breasts? Because this is one thing for me with my second son, I was thinking, okay, how should I rotate the breast during feeding so I'm not neglecting one breast, I'm affecting my supply, or he's not getting enough milk or something like that. So there's many different opinions out there, but I'm gonna just share with you my experience of what worked and we did really well with it. So whenever a baby goes to feed at the breast, that first initial feed is like four milk. And this is like a watery type milk and it's really helping them quench their thirst and get that meal started. And then they keep sucking and sucking and you'll notice as they're feeding that their sucking motion will be fast at first and then once they get into it, it's gonna be slow and a lot of times they fall asleep. But as they keep going, it's gradually gonna go into what's called hind milk. And hind milk is like, the fat, fatty type milk. And it, um, I think of it as a dessert. They're getting that good fat and then they're gonna be done and it'll help keep them for a while. So I found that the best thing for my son was that I would let him completely nurse on one breast, finish it off, get happy and satisfied with that. And then I would offer the second breast. Now, whenever he was young, during those first month of life, he only wanted one breast. Like that was good enough for him. But as he got older and he got more hungry and hungrier, he would 
completely empty one breast and then he would go to the second breast and then he'd even go back to the other breast. So um, that could be a method you use. Now how you keep track of that though is you want to write it down. You can keep it in an app. There's great free apps out there that'll help you keep track of it or write it down and um, just remember that you know at eight o'clock you fed on the left breast and then with the next feeding you need to make sure that you go to the right breast. Now if you're pumping you want to make sure that you keep this same concept in mind about the fore milk and the hind milk because you don't want to pump from your breast right and left breast a bunch of fore milk and then you just mix that together and in this bottle that's supposed to be a complete feeding it's just a bunch of fore milk because I made that mistake with my first son. So whenever you pump your left breast take the milk, put that in the bottle. That's for that feeding. And then for the right breast, take that milk, put that in the bottle. Because with him, I didn't know any better. And um, whenever I went to pump, I pumped my first part and it was the watery four milk. And you can tell over time what it looks like because four milk is like more watery looking and the hind milk is more creamier looking. So in that bottle was a bunch of four milk and I went to give it to him and he drank it and then within like i want to say 10 to 20 minutes all of a sudden his stomach became really bloated he had really bad tummy pain started crying and then he had a bowel movement and it was like this greenish watery diarrhea and i looked it up and that can happen if they receive too much fore milk so just keep in mind that concept whenever you are pumping now whenever you're breastfeeding specifically where the baby is nursing at the breast how do you know that your baby is actually receiving milk or receiving enough milk because whenever you're pumping, you're pumping that milk out. You're able to measure it out. You can measure how many ounces the baby took in so you can get a good idea how much your baby's taking in. But whenever you're breastfeeding strictly at the breast, it's like, huh, I don't see it, I don't know. So you need to look for some signs that your baby is getting enough milk. One thing is that you know your baby's getting milk is to listen to them at the breast. Listen to them swallow. My son is a loud swallower and I can hear him just gulping and gulping. Some babies you have to really listen very subtly to tell that they are getting milk. Another thing is that their little ears will wiggle whenever they're swallowing, you'll see jaw movement. And then whenever you put them on the breast, a lot of times their hands are clenched and they're just ready to eat. But as they're drinking, they start to calm down and their little hands will open up and they'll just be sucking there and be falling asleep. That's a good sign that they're getting good milk. And a big indicator that your baby is getting enough breast milk is that they are gaining weight. So you'll be going to the pediatrician a lot, they will be weighing your baby, and you can also weigh your baby at home. So during those first four months, they should be gaining about five to eight ounces per week. Now another thing you can look at, which tells you that your baby's getting enough milk, is that they have wet diapers. So during those first couple days after birth, remember their tummy's small, they're not taking in a lot of milk, they'll have maybe about two wet diapers a day. And uh, it may even be hard to tell there's urine in there, you'll have to look at that little wet indicator on the disposable diaper. But after a week, once your milk production has increased, they're drinking a lot more, they should have about six to eight wet diapers a day. Then you can look at their stools. How many bowel movements are they having? So within four 48 hours after birth, your baby should pass what's called meconium. This is a dark green, sticky, tarry looking stool. That is a good thing that they pass. But after that, the stool is going to transition in how it looks. And with breastfed babies, they have a very unique looking stool. It's like this yellowish, slimy, diarrhea looking stool. And they can go quite often throughout the days for those first six weeks, four times or more. But then after six weeks, some breastfed babies may, if they're exclusively breastfed, not receiving anything else, they may go maybe once a week or may go a whole week without going. So now let's talk about breastfeeding positions. So in those early days, you're gonna notice as a new mom that you're gonna spend a lot of time breastfeeding. So it's essential that you find a comfortable position that works for you and baby. So these positions are the main positions recommended, but you're gonna notice that as your baby grows and you get more comfortable with breastfeeding, that you're probably gonna invent your own positions. So whenever you go to feed your baby, you wanna make sure that you pick a spot that is very comfortable and that it 
has good back support because you don't want to be hunched over, bent over, feeding your baby. You want to make sure that you are bringing the baby to the breast, not the breast to the baby. And one thing I have found that's really helpful, especially whenever you're first starting out with breastfeeding, is that you have some like nursing pillow or blankets or support to help support the baby, support you while you're feeding. And that you make sure that the place that you are gonna be feeding at has everything that you need, like burp cloths, your drink, remote control, diapers, anything that you need, because there's nothing like feeding your baby, you have the perfect latch, your baby's almost asleep, and you're so comfortable, but you need something. So you wanna be able to easily reach it. Now, if you haven't had your baby yet, and you're wanting to practice these positions I'm about to go over, what you can do is you can get a doll, a stuffed animal, and just practice holding the stuffed animal or doll in these positions so you can feel what they feel like. Because at first, if you've never done it, it does feel a little awkward. So it takes practice over time. The first position is called the cross cradle. And this is where you lay the baby across your chest with their stomach against you. And you will hold the baby in the bend of your arm and support their head and back with the arm that is on the opposite side of the breast you are nursing from. Then there is the cradle hold. This is very similar to the cross cradle, hence its name. But you're holding the baby in the bend of the arm that is on the same side that the baby is nursing from. Next is the football hold. And it gives its name from how a football player holds a football. So so I use this position a lot with my second son because I had a c-section and it kept his body away from that tender incision so with this you hold the baby so they fit by your side in the bend of your arm with their tummy against your side and use one hand to hold your breast and the other to support their head and neck now for this position I found that using a pillow was really helpful to help support the baby and made it easier to do then there's a side line and this is where you lie on your side while the baby nurses from the breast closest to the surface you're lying on for me, this position took time and was not something I used in the early days because my son was small and uncoordinated, but as he grew up, he, this actually became one of his favorite positions and it's quite comfortable too. Now, one thing about this position is that you always have to be aware of your baby's position and not to fall asleep before placing them in a safe place to sleep so they don't get hurt. And then there's the laid back position. This is where you lay back with support and have your baby lay across you. Um, even though I had a C-section, I had to start using this position as well. I would try to protect my site, make sure he didn't hit it because my milk flow was really fast for him in the beginning and he was actually starting to choke. So I figured out this position and it helped out quite a bit because from where he was on top of the breast, he was able to control more how the milk was coming out rather than just drowning on it. So if you have a baby, maybe they are having issue with your fast flow of milk, you could try this position. And as a side note, he actually outgrew grew this once he got bigger he was actually able to tolerate the faster flow of milk and actually prefers it but in those early days he didn't like it so now let's talk about latching whenever you're going to be having your baby nurse at your breast getting a good latch is essential it's essential for you to be comfortable during nursing and it's essential for them to be able to remove as much milk as possible because if you don't get a good latch what's going to happen is that you're going to experience a lot of pain while breastfeeding and you won't want to do it it will damage your nipples to the point where you've got to let them heal and you really can't let them nurse because it's got to heal and um, you can get mastitis because the baby's not removing milk from your breast so it inflames your breast tissue and it can be infected and then the baby is not going to get as much milk as they need so they can be cranky and have poor weight gain and things like that so the thing with latching that i really want to stress and help motivate you about is that this takes time this is hard for a majority of women. For me, it took time. I remember during those early days, my nipples were just really sore. I wasn't getting the greatest latch, but I really, really wanted to breastfeed my son this way. So we just kept with it. And if you keep practicing with your baby, you keep working with your baby, your baby's gonna learn how to properly latch and you're gonna go on to have successful breastfeeding. Now, if you're having a lot of problems getting your baby to latch, this is a great time to consult with a lactation consultant. Some um, labor and delivery units will have lactation consultants. If not at your pediatrician's office, they should have one. And these people are great at identifying 
identifying what's wrong and helping you find out how you can improve. Now, sometimes it may be a nipple issue. Uh, some women may have inverted nipples or um, maybe the baby has like tongue tie. They can be evaluated for that. One thing that I found that was helpful, it's called latch assist. And it's this device that you use right before you feed your baby. And it looks like a little bulb and you take it and you put it on your nipple and you squeeze it and it draws the nipple out. So it makes the nipple more readily available for the baby. Um, it's good for women who have inverted nipples or not even inverted nipples because it, in a sense it just primes the nipple and makes it easier for the baby to latch on. And I use this in the early days with my son and he really did a great job latching because that nipple was already there ready for him to go onto instead of having to draw it out himself. Now with latching, it's important that your baby latches onto as much breast tissue as possible. We don't want them just latching onto the nipple of the breast. The nipple is the pointy part that comes off of your breast, your baby's not going to just latch onto that part and suck out milk. Instead, they need to open their mouth wide enough to get in the areola as well, which is the dark pigmented part of the breast. And the reason we want them to do this is because whenever they draw in all that breast tissue, it draws the nipple out and pushes that nipple up into the palate of the baby. And whenever the baby sucks, they can easily express and draw lots of milk out rather than if they were just latched on to a little part of the areola and a little part of the nipple. They wouldn't be able to draw as much milk out. And this is going to be more comfortable for your nipples. If your baby was just on the nipple, you will feel it. It'll be like they're literally just mashing the nipple. Instead, we don't want them. We want them around that areola, mashing that part where it doesn't hurt to get that milk out. So before you do that, you wanna make sure that you keep these things in mind. Before you put your baby on your breast, you wanna make sure that their mouth is open as wide as possible. You can get them to do this by stimulating the rooting reflex in younger infants or by taking the nipple to their mouth and teasing them with it because it'll get them to open their mouth. Now when their mouth is open, make sure that your nipple is lined up with their nose because we want that lower jaw, that chin, to be the one that makes the contact first with the breast. So gently bring the baby to the breast by making sure that their chin comes into contact first with the lower part of the breast, which is away from the nipple, hence it's going to be on that lower part of the areola, that pigmented part. And then the upper part is going to go onto the breast. So take the mouth to the top part over the nipple and it'll be on the top portion of the areola. So once your baby's latched, you should not be able to see much of that areola. Now, once your baby has latched onto the breast, you can tell if they have a good latch. One way is, are you having pain? So in these early days, whenever you are getting your nipples acclimated to nursing, seen a baby, they're going to be a little sore. So with that first latch, yes, you may feel a little uncomfortable at first, but it's going to ease off. And then you should start feeling just this little tugging sensation, nothing painful. But if that pain doesn't go away, it continues and you'll know if it's not a good latch because it will sting really bad. It will hurt. It'll feel like something is just grating on your nipples. So if that happens, what you want to do is you want to relatch. So take a clean finger, insert it in the baby's mouth and just break suction. Don't ever just pull the baby off of the breast because they're going to take your nipple and stretch it out and it's going to hurt it even more. Now, what are some signs that you can look for that tells you you have a good latch? Well, of course, it doesn't hurt while you're nursing. And when you look down at your baby's lips while they're on the breast, their lips should be flanged out like a fish, especially that top one. And the bottom one may be flanged out as well, but it may be a little hard to see because the chin will be resting so closely to the breast. So that's another way you can tell that you have a good latch is that their chin is just really flush up against the breast. Also, you can hear swallowing sounds and your baby's ears are moving up and down, they're wiggling and they're content. At first they may be sucking rapidly and then they slow down and it's more rhythmic and they start to become sleepy. So as I pointed out earlier, they may have the clenched fists and really be sucking at the breast and then all of a sudden they start to relax and open up those hands. And whenever you're done nursing, take a look at your nipples. Your nipples should not look abnormal normal afterwards, like being squished or bent. That tells you that whenever the baby's drawing out the nipple, it's not where it's supposed to be in the mouth. So they should appear
appear pulled out like they're a little bit longer from where they've had suction on them and they should be round. And your breasts, after you feed, they should feel empty. They should feel softer. Okay, so those are some things that you can expect during the early days of breastfeeding. And I just really want to just say, I know that during those early days, especially after you've just gave birth, you're losing sleep, you're adjusting to caring for a little human being, it can be really overwhelming and very challenging. And if you're choosing to breastfeed, there's so many things you have to learn and just get used to with how your body is leaking milk, your breasts are sore and things like that. So I just want to let you know that it gets easier. I promise it does. I remember with both of my sons, each time I felt so overwhelmed and I'm like, I hope I can do this and I would doubt myself, but I really just stayed with it. But I think the hardest time for me was during that first month, adjusting to everything, getting on a feeding schedule with him and just getting accustomed to just doing everything because it takes a lot of time especially in those early days. But later on, as your baby grows, if you stay with breastfeeding, it is really just the most easiest thing I've ever done. And I remember hearing other women saying that, that, you know, those first months are hard, but if you just stay with it, it's gonna be so easy, and it is. Uh, with my second son, I'm almost two years out with breastfeeding him, and it is the easiest thing I've ever done in my life. And I think back, to those early days and how hard it was. But we got through it and he's done great and I'm great. I'm glad that I got to go through the experience with him. So just keep going with it. If you need help, seek out a lactation consultant and just keep doing it because breast milk is amazing for your baby. And um, I just wanna say congratulations on your baby and uh, thank you so much for watching this video.